Hello! Before I begin this, what is essentially a mini video essay, I do want to stress that this is just my own reading of the show. I feel like that should go without saying in video essays, but I'm gonna be using a lot of phrases like they, they as in the staff of the show, did this, or they meant this, and I feel like it's real easy to put words in artists' mouths on the internet, especially when it comes to animation, since the usually very closed-off process has been opened up by social media and people have developed all sorts of parasocial relationships and assumptions based on the online projections of people who make cartoons. Rebecca Sugar and people's inability to be normal about them is a good case study of this. I'm actually seeing a fair bit of similarities between current Owl House discourse and Steven Universe discourse at its peak, namely that which surrounds their respective cancellations and the content each show's crew may or may not have slid in under the wire to spite network higher-ups. I don't think we should assume people's creative decisions and actions unless they admit them outright, but as with Steven, a lot of things in the Owl House develop an interesting formalist aura around them if you read them as this may be about trying to make queer cartoons under the Disney umbrella and or this could be interpreted as some sort of response to the show's cancellation. The may be and could be interpreted as in those sentences are key though. Lots of problems arise when you go these are definitely intentional messages and no creative decision in the show could have been made outside of that reading and framework. I wouldn't like it if people put words in my mouth even if they were accurate to the situation. So big asterisks on everything I'm going to say. I just think it's fun. If you read the show like this, it gives it an extra meta-textual layer. Look at me saying video essay words. Also, this video will spoil the entirety of the Owl House up to the last episode, which as of time of recording has yet to air. It'll probably hit better if you watch the whole thing, which you should. It's, it's pretty short, but experiencing it this way for the first time would be pretty funny, so you do you. Also, there will probably be some lore stuff in the last episode that'll prompt me to amend this reading, so put a mental asterisk there as well. Okay. The first main villain of this Disney cartoon is a literal 1600s witch trial colonist from Connecticut named Philip, who found a portal to what is not even that many steps away from hell with his brother Caleb when Caleb fucked a witch and seemingly began to prefer a world where people could be queer, I mean, practice magic freely over the one where people are mass murdering women right in front of them constantly. Philip probably took this as a personal slight against him, but this is a child colonist in the witch trials. He's been taught his whole life that non believers and practitioners of magic will go to hell and that hell is a bad thing, and his brother has chosen to go to hell, which is actually pretty nice, albeit less than inhabitable to humans, which makes a lot of sense considering it's another dimension and not like four humans. Like many of the most successful imperialist crusades in human history, Philip decided to play the long game. He stayed in hell for hundreds of years by slowly converting his body into a rotting mass of human-shaped stuff that subsists on everyone's funny little Pokemon creatures through which they harness magic. Under a new identity, he rose to political power by manipulating the masses into bigotry, curbing their natural rights, imposing magical fascism, and ultimately attempting to genocide them. Implicitly, this was done out of religious fervor. When his intentions are revealed, Bellos makes repeated references to saving humanity's souls. And despite our differences, I want to help you, Luce. A city can rise from the ashes, but a soul... What does that mean? Please, I don't want to see another human life destroyed by this place. I do pity you. These monsters have warped your sense of reality. Perhaps it'd be merciful to put you out of your misery. It's Christian colonialist violence with the serial numbers scratched off for plausible deniability, which is very based. Disney cartoon. Witches and other magic users in the Owl House can represent a lot of marginalized identities. The only one I have a right to talk about since I belong to it is the queer community. It sure is easy to read witches and other magic users in the Owl House as queer people. <laughs> A lot of them are queer people, for one thing. The first episode heavily features a conversion therapy prison literally called the Conformatorium. As he rises to power, Bello swindles magic users into practicing one kind of magic only, nerfing them for the sake of creating in-groups and curbing their ability to self-defend. This process is done by literally branding them. Before he realizes he can do this en masse if he controls the state, Bellos tricks small communities into getting branded, only to leave them incapacitated so he can eat their palisman. That didn't so much has become ineffective as it became inefficient, witch trial colonists are not known for their half measures. Bellus was on that Genocide Sigma grind set, and that spun out into the events of the show. I wonder if this is based on anything in history! 
The second main villain of the Disney cartoon The Owl House is an age 6 to 11 young boy who they pitch the show, I mean game, to in a desperate bid to survive. The Collector is part of a race of overpowered god beings who turn every living thing who doesn't willingly subscribe to their sanitization of everything into soulless puppets. When freed, the Collector thrusts the world into a hollow recreation of its former self, based on his interpretations of King's personal accounts, mind you, which is at least secondhand, if not third, but injected with his own Nightlight, Paper Mario, Slash Kirby, Slash Clonoa core aesthetic. Side note, I love that they were like, what would be scary to denizens of hell, and essentially decided glitter? <laughs> In my opinion, the Collector is the Disney Corporation. The main villain of the Owl House is the fact that, at the end of the day, it was subject to the whims of an entertainment conglomerate whose moderate at best, actively hostile to queer people at worst agenda, clashed with the pretty radical politics of the show. And don't get me wrong, I think it so far succeeds at his radical messaging in spite of all this. The Owl House and Andor are the most radical things Disney has been tangentially responsible for in a long time, maybe ever. But when all is said and done, there's still this ethereal 6 to 11 year old kid straw man, the corporation who produces but rarely meaningfully supports your cartoon by and for queer people, necessarily pushes through a sieve of sanitization. This show gets away with a lot, but it's lightning in a bottle, not the norm. It's a concession made by a corporation that is and always has been bent on capitalistic mass appeal that was swift clamped down on under scrutiny, and its downfall was a smiling someone trying to turn it into something that they think it is, but it isn't. I wonder if this is based on anything in history! Okay, thank you for listening to me. Uh, this was my first attempt at something video essayistic, but potentially not the last, so if you enjoyed it, let me know. I have a very long video about my experiences with Adventure Time already written, if I can ever find the time to actually make it. As evidenced by pretty much everything else on this channel, I make cartoons. You should go watch them and give me some money if you can. Also, check out the Anarchy Funhouse, please. Okay, goodbye!